Good evening. We would like to extend a welcome and a greeting from the Snellville United Methodist Church. Today is Good Friday. Tonight we will be observing the service of Tenebrae. The service of Tenebrae actually means the service of darkness or shadows. And it dates back during Holy Week to the 17th or 18th century AD. And it's characterized by the continual extinguishing of candles. This service with Bible readings and song is the retelling of the last hours of Jesus's life on earth. And in this service, we are reminded through scripture of the cruel and the brutal treatment that Jesus Christ, our Savior, received. It was heart-wrenching. It's heartbreaking. As we journey with Christ to the cross, Jesus gave his all. Jesus gave himself fully and completely for the people of God, for us, his children. It was Jesus' unending love for us that was powerfully demonstrated in his ultimate sacrificial gift on the cross. The truth is, it would be easier for us, it would be far less painful for us if we chose to ignore the pain that Jesus endured. It would be a much prettier picture to ignore the cruelty of the cross. It would be much easier to ignore the brutality of Jesus' death. But as Christians, as followers of our Savior, as those who proclaim Jesus our Lord, we cannot. Because to experience the celebration of Easter morning, we also have to remember the darkest hours. We have to journey with Jesus. It's our way of loving him. It's our way of praising our God. It's our way of expressing our gratitude for his ultimate gift, the gift of his life. Let me invite you to join me now in the call to worship. And this is the judgment that the light has come into the world and the people love darkness rather than the light. God is light in whom there is no darkness at all. For God sent his son into the world, not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Everyone who does evil hates the light and does not come to the light.
When Jesus was at Bethany visiting the house of Simon, who had a skin disease, a woman came to him with a vase made of alabaster containing very expensive perfume. She poured it on Jesus' head while he was sitting at dinner. Now when the disciples saw it, they were angry and said, Why this waste? This perfume could have been sold for a lot of money and given to the poor. But Jesus knew what they were thinking. He said, Why do you make trouble for this woman? She's done a good thing for me. You always have the poor with you, but you won't always have me. By pouring this perfume over my body, she's prepared me to be buried. I tell you the truth, that wherever in the whole world this good news is announced, what she's done will also be told in memory of her. Then one of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priest and he said, What will you give me if I betray him to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver. And from that moment he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying, Where do you want us to make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When they had sang to him, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, You will all become deserted because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, The all become deserted because of you. I will never desert you. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I'm deeply grieved, even to that. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, he went away for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So, leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Amen. Then Jesus came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. 
With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you were here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly, one of those with Jesus put out his hand on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father, and he will at once send more than twelve legions of angels? But how then? Would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say it must happen in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day, I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place, so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Those who arrested Jesus led him to Caiaphas, the high priest. The legal experts and the elders had gathered there. Peter followed him from a distance until he came to the high priest's courtyard. He entered that area and sat outside with the officers to see how it would turn out. The chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus so that they could put him to death. They didn't find anything they could use from many false witnesses who were willing to come forward. But finally they found two who said, This man said, I can destroy God's temple and rebuild it in three days. Then the high priest stood and said to Jesus, Aren't you going to respond to the testimony that these people have brought against you? But Jesus was silent. The high priest said, by the living God, I demand that you tell us whether you are the Christ, God's Son. You said it, Jesus replied. But I say to you that from now on, you'll see the human one sitting on the right side of the Almighty and coming on the heavenly clouds. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He's insulting God. Why do we need any more witnesses? Look, you've heard his insults against God. What do you think? And they answered, He deserves to die. And they spit in his face and beat him. They hit him and said, Prophesy for us, Christ. Who hit you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, You also were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before all of them, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. When he went out on the porch, another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again, he denied it with an oath, I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you are also one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then he began to curse and he swore an oath, I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said, Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. When Judas his betrayed, saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. He said, I have seen 
by betraying innocent blood. But they said, what is that to us? See to it yourself. Throwing down the 30 pieces of silver in the temple, he departed and he went and hanged himself. But the chief priest, taking the piece of silver, said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasure, since they are blood mine. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusers they make against you? But Jesus gave him no answer not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Those who arrested Jesus led him to Caiaphas, the high priest. The legal experts and the elders had gathered there. Peter followed him from a distance until he came to the high priest's courtyard. He entered that area and sat outside with the officers to see how it would turn out. The chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus so that they could put him to death. They didn't find anything they could use from many false witnesses who were willing to come forward. But finally they found two who said, This man said, I can destroy God's temple and rebuild it in three days. Then the high priest stood and said to Jesus, Aren't you going to respond to the testimony that these people have brought against you? But Jesus was silent. The high priest said, by the living God, I demand that you tell us whether you are the Christ, God's Son. You said it, Jesus replied. But I say to you that from now on, you'll see the human one sitting on the right side of the Almighty and coming on the heavenly clouds. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He's insulting God. Why do we need any more witnesses? Look, you've heard his insults against God. What do you think? And they answered, He deserves to die. And they spit in his face and beat him. They hit him and said, Prophesy for us, Christ. Who hit you? Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him, and they put a scarlet robe on him. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and they knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat on him and they took the reed and they struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. And when they came to a place called Dolgatum, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gold. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lot. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head they put a charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their head and saying, you who will destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribe and the elder, were marking, saying, were marking, saying, He saved others, and he cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. 
Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he wants to. For he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, this man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. The curtain of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, the rocks split, and the bodies of many holy people who had died were raised. After Jesus' resurrection, they came out of their graves and went into the holy city where they appeared to many people. When the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and what had just happened, they were filled with awe and said, This was certainly God's Son. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases. Yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole. And by his bruises, we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he did not open his mouth like a lamb that is led to the slaughter and like a sheep that before his shears is silent. So he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice, he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich, although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Why you there when they crucified my Lord? Why you
Sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Why would thou, when they laid thee to the tree, Thank you.